Hey, God bless you guys. Hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. It's me back again with another video. Crystal for Jesus here. I love you guys. If you're new to my channel, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm here and I share dreams and visions of Bible prophecy for Acts 2 17. The Lord shall send dreams and visions to his sons and daughters and his young and old and they shall prophesy. He's going to, y'all, I've been getting attacked by the enemy right now because he's been trying to tongue twist me, tongue tie me, like make my throat raspy and stuff. And I'm like <laughs> fighting it right now. So I love you guys. Um, so we got Rich uh, Antoine. He emailed this to me. Thank you so much, brother. And he said he had a rapture dream and he wants to share it with us. And we know that the Lord is speaking to us. And that's what's so great about these is, you know, that we can come together as the body of Christ and, you know, share with each other and wake each other up, you know, share God's message so that we can wake up to the signs that we're living in, that we need to be right with God immediately and we need to get right and we need to be on track right now. So without further ado, you guys, let's go ahead and jump into this. Hi there. Yes. Hey, yeah, uh, I'm Ricardo. Uh, many of you will see and know me, but uh, this is an important message. It's about a vision that God has given me. It's concerning the rapture. That God is saying that the rapture is about to happen. On January 14, I got into this vision. Everything changed. Something changed outside. I had a feeling that everybody was gone for some reason. And in a moment in time, and there I am. And I feel like my spirit is about to go. My spirit is about to raise, and that's happening all over the world. But as I'm about to, to be taken off, right, I'm still there. I feel the feeling, but I ain't going nowhere. So there I am with my cell phone. I understood that God wanted me to, to have my last opportunity and to share it with the world. Basically, on my phone, I was seeing like, like Facebook, and basically what he wanted me to do is to press the button. But I hesitated. I was thinking about it. Because part of me couldn't believe this, right? Part of me was in denial. Um, I didn't I didn't press to share it with the world. I hesitated, so I know I'm left behind. I knew like I was left behind. When I got up, I was terrified. You know, that fear, it just breaks a man's heart. Most importantly, God revealed to me and very seriously that when a word is spoken, you better be faithful to it, right? When you speak something or give you something in your heart to say it, we have to obey. Amen. And uh, I was just thinking, you know, when he was saying that, um, you know, he said that God wanted him the last chance to post to Facebook, right? And he wanted to post to share with everybody, to tell everybody Jesus is coming. Jesus is real, right? Tell them you have the chance right now to tell them. And he did not do it. It, it made me think of how he was, he was refusing to obey. He was refusing to obey God. And basically it was, he was afraid. He didn't want to do it, you know, and it's like, you know, people don't go in the rapture who don't want to listen to Jesus. You know, people who get left behind are the ones who did not want to follow Christ. They did not listen to him. Every time he was like, you have the chance to tell somebody about me. You have the chance to tell them about me. And you didn't tell anybody. You're not telling them. You're not warning them. Why aren't you listening to me? You know, and it's like, you know, he's, people that don't want to listen to Jesus, why would they go in the rapture? You know, you're going to stay here because you don't love God. If you love God, you would do everything that he tells you to do because you love him so much. Like you are obsessed with Jesus. Jesus is your new obsession. I was just thinking about the other day, like, man, I am so like, I'm so obsessed with Jesus. I remember when I was a kid and I used to be obsessed with horses and that's like, I, it's gone. I still love them, but I, it's nothing compares to being obsessed with Jesus. Like he is everything now. He's on my, all my clothes. He is like everywhere, you know, on, and everything. I think about him all the time. It's just like, I get excited when I see Jesus out there, you know, and 
anyways, I'm getting off track here, but yeah. So like being left behind for not being obedient, you know, do you know Jesus? Do you know that he requires obedience? Because if you know Jesus, you, you would know that he wants you to be listening to him when he is telling you to do something through the Holy Spirit. Um, so yeah, being afraid, being afraid to, you, you know what? Okay. Let's share the scripture that let's, let's share the scripture that goes with, uh, the servant, um, not listening to Jesus when he gives them something and he, he doesn't, he, he doesn't do it. Let's go. So we'll go to Matthew chapter 25. And it is the parable of the three servants. So the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in portion to their abilities. He then left on his trip. The servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money and earned five more. The servant with two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. <laughs> All right. So after a long time, their master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they had used his money. The servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came for came forward with five more and said, Master, you have given me five bags of silver to invest and I have earned five more. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. The servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest, and I have earned two more. The master said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here's your money back. <laughs> but the master replied, You wicked and lazy servant. If you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on that. <laughs> then he ordered to take the money from this servant and give it to the one with the 10 bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And guess what's going to happen when those left behind people are left behind in the tribulation period. They're going to be weeping and gnashing their teeth as well because Jesus is going to be coming soon and he is seeking a holy and righteous bride of Christ. He is not seeking a lukewarm, disobedient son or daughter in the faith and there it is for you. There's the scripture right there. The servant that is being given something to do and you are afraid and you don't want to do it. And you're like, <laughs> why am I left behind, Lord? And it's like, well, what do you think? Why do you think? You're afraid. You're too afraid to tell people about Jesus. You're too afraid to warn them. I've given you these chances. I told you to do my will. I told you to do this. And you were like, no. I'm too scared. Well, guess what happens to people who are too scared to tell people about Jesus? Guess what happens to people who are too afraid to use the talents that they have been given? You have been given a talent of singing. You have given a talent to speak. You have been given a talent of art. You have been given a talent of storytelling. I don't know, like so many things, you know, dancing, you'd be dancing for Christ. You could be wearing Jesus shirts and dancing on TikTok or whatever. Like, you know, Jesus is coming, you know, you're using it and you're inserting it into, into doing something for Jesus. So it's like, I've been given the talents of, 
art. I've been given the talents of, um, you know, I, I, something else too is uh, there's things that like, okay, like we have naturally, like I've had people tell me that I have a nice voice, which I have no idea that I have a nice voice, but that was a gift given to me. If I do, that's a gift given to me for this purpose because he wanted me on here on YouTube and he wanted me to be talking, which is like, hmm, I do not want to be doing this, by the way. N no, but I'm going to be obedient and I'm doing it for Jesus. Like whatever your talents are, figure it out. You can implement Christ in those serving Christ in those ways and using your talents for the kingdom because he doesn't want a lukewarm believer in him. And he is a jealous God. He is jealous for you. He is not going to share you with anybody. He does not want to share you. He doesn't want you um, living in adultery. He doesn't want you living in sin. He doesn't want you smoking cigarettes um, because that's how you're getting um, your fix. That's how you're making yourself feel better. No, he is a jealous God. He said it in his word. And he said that he wants to be the one thing in your life. He wants you to be listening to him, following him, doing everything. He gave you eternal life for free. Now, what's your, what, what are you going to do for him? You need to follow him. You need to do his work and his will. He died on the cross for us before we were even born, before we even knew who he was. And he requires us to live for him now. So you cannot be afraid. You cannot live in sin. You cannot be afraid and and not and not doing anything for Jesus. And that is <laughs> that is a message from the Holy Spirit through from Jesus through me to all of you guys and all these messages are for me as well. And just a reminder for me like, you know, can't be getting off the bandwagon. <laughs> you know, can't stop now, can't stop being obedient now. Got to stay on the boat. Right, because I've had dreams where I have to stay on the boat too. So, think of your family. I mean, where's the hope? Where, where, where do you put your hope? And your riches and your businesses. You understand that when the rapture comes, or even if you're about to die, if you die today, right? You ain't taking nothing with you. Even your clothes are gonna be on the floor. Yes. Yes, it is true. Even your clothes are going to be left here. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, brother, for sharing that with me. I hope that you guys were encouraged and blessed and, um, you know, get getting on track and being encouraged to be a soldier for Christ because we are not about to lay down and get lazy right now, you guys. We are... Mm -mm. Soldiers never quit. Soldiers for Christ never quit, you guys. Leave that down below in the comments. Soldiers for Christ never quit, okay? <laughs> and I want you guys to be strengthened. I want you guys to be strengthened in the Lord Jesus and being encouraged and staying on track because it's so hard to stay on track, you know? It's it's so hard to to stay in a point of readiness, you know, because we want to just, we're tired. We want to chill. We don't want to do anything, you know, like I am literally would just lay around. Sometimes I'd just be laying around all day and doing nothing. And I'm just like, Oh, <laughs> so we do, we, we have to stay ready. We can't get complacent. And, um, the Lord is keeping me that way too, by like having me do this work for him, you know, having, I'm having to watch these and then he's giving me dreams and visions and stuff to like go with these videos, you know, and he's like keeping me ready so that I can help keep you guys ready. Um, so I'm really, really glad that the Lord has given me this supernatural power and energy to literally have a video out every single day. <laughs> like, like if, if God wasn't the one, um, working all this for this channel, I would have just like, I am lazy. I am not, I am not motivated person. 
And God knows that. So he has to supernaturally give me his strength and his motivation to get any of this done and to literally be consistent in doing it all the time. So when the Lord asks you to do something that is out of your comfort zone, just know that, um, uh, just know that you need to trust that whatever he's telling you to do that you feel like you're not qualified for. Of course, you're not qualified for that. It doesn't matter. He is going to give you the energy and the strength to do it. So when you're getting a feeling of wanting to do something for Christ, you have this itching of like, hmm, I feel like I want to do this, but I'm not sure if God wants me to do that. But I feel that feeling. Dude, that feeling right there is God. He, that is, he's already, he's trying to nudge you to do it. Cause that was the first thing for me. I just like, I was like, I just feel like I should share my testimony on YouTube and boom, that's the beginning of this channel, how it started and how it has come this far into what it is today. Because even though I don't have anything to say, <laughs> I'm not a talker, I'm an introvert. He's giving me everything so that I can do the will for him. So just know, you guys, that like, even if you're not adequate, even if you don't like being on camera and you don't talk well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You you come on, share your dreams and visions and just do it because that is, that's just what you got to do. It's what you got to do, you guys. So anyways, I love you guys and I'll see you guys again soon in the next one. Bye.